So someone's described you as the money man. We continue to believe that what we bring to the companies we invest in is much more than money. Um, money is becoming more of a commodity. Um, we like to invest in local entrepreneurs that require you basically to come in alongside your money to really um, help them with governance, help them with uh, uh, transparency, help them also with taking themselves to the next level in terms of operational of efficiency, human resources, and so on and so forth. You're managing around $70 million. 72, yes. Yeah. 72, the yes. two's extra, it, it's important, well, isn't it? Well, everybody who's given us a dollar is very important to us. You said you've, you, you've worked for the, you know, the bigger players, for you, important to go into this very specific niche within Africa at this specific time? Well, we saw a gap. So we said, let's try and put together a fund that will address that. I feel that in my job, most of my friends who are doing private equity around the world um, are vilified. They are these money hungry, you know, people and so on and so forth. But we in Africa can actually today claim to be doing private equity with a strong developmental angle. So you, you're working from Morocco down to Angola. And you're basically going to a certain type of businessman. Listen, I'm going to invest in your company. What are you looking for and who specifically is, is, is making a difference, is doing something? Well, first we're looking for guys who have already proved something, who've done well and so on. So that's the minimum. On top of that, we need people who um, have a transformative mindset. What people, do you mean by that? By that, people who are saying, look, I'm no longer willing to kind of operate in a status quo mom and pop shop. I want to be a regional player. Um, also, take some painful decisions uh, in terms of delaying their gratification. Um, if you've built a company over four, five, six, ten years, and all of a sudden you want to go to the next level, some people ha don't have the stomach for it because they want to enjoy, so to speak, their success. And when we come in, we're basically working with them to make those sacrifices to take themselves to the next level because it requires a lot of investment, a lot of time, and a lot of stress, unfortunately. But the rewards are tremendous. You, your partner, a lot of people, particularly your age, your generation, studied overseas, Harvard, coming back. How important is this diaspora, the returnees? I think it's critical. I think Africa needs all of its forces. Um, I would not want to portray it as we are kind of prodigal sons returning, so to speak. I don't believe in that image at all. I think there are brilliant people locally that have been doing fantastic, but you got to come in and mesh. And I think many of us that are returning do well because we have stayed in touch. We don't do well because we've just been parachuted after all the various degrees and Wall Street and whatnot. It's because you stayed in touch, you've showed an interest, and today you can leverage that with whatever you've learned outside. I think that that's critical for Africa to have that mix of skills and backgrounds. And how critical is it now? People like you being the bridge, literally, between the investment coming in and the seeds that are growing. I think it's, it's uh, incredibly critical. I think it's critical for Africa to really have the best minds from the most diverse perspectives. Because what's going on in Africa politically, socially, economically is so radical compared to maybe even what is being put out in the press. It's so positively radical. You need people from different perspectives to come in and kind of say, look, this is what, I, this is my, this is what I'm willing to pitch in in, in in this debate. And I think from the economic standpoint, you basically need guys who have best practice from abroad that can basically do some type of technological transfer locally with people who have local knowledge who can teach you that local knowledge. So we learn every day um, as, as, uh, as we try to also contribute. You were saying to me before um, the cameras turned on that you think that particularly the role of the private sector is really underplayed in a sense. Yeah, I think pr the private sector, I believe, continues to be a little bit of a gadget name. You know, people like to say the private sector this, the private sector that. But I don't think they really kind of, uh, particularly from a government standpoint, uh, I think some of the smartest governments in Africa right now are those who are beginning to say, forget the titles, let's actually go into the doing. So if you say you believe in the private sector, it shouldn't be just a speech. It should actually be a change in the regulatory framework. It should be government being a supporter of, of growth and, and job creation rather than rules and paranoia about what the private sector might do and take over and be this great evil. So I think once mm, the governments who actually get that are the ones who are doing a fantastic job right now and are the ones that we have a lot of hope um, to, to, to sort of lead the continent going forward.